she brought her sandwich during that a time when she knew she would need that damn sandwich. Hello friends and book babes, welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing a little reading vlog for two of my most anticipated romance new releases. I'm not even gonna say, uh, don't mind my appearance because at this point you guys are used to me not looking presentable, so. It is what it is. But <laughs> for this video, I have two books that are new releases. They've been out for a little bit now at this point by the time you've seen this video. But they are my most anticipated in the romance genre at least. And so for the physical copy, I have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Can't wait to dive into this one. I love Abby Jimenez. She has become a really big favorite of mine in the span of like two months. I've already read her entire catalog, basically. But we're gonna read first because we got it on Libby, so we need to read it before Libby takes it back, is A Funny Story by Emily Henry. Since it's been out for a little bit, I've heard some things. I heard a lot of people don't necessarily like the guy in this, so that's disheartening. But I don't know because I'm gonna be honest. Emily Henry is, she's not really my favorite. I know the girls go feral for her, but she just doesn't really do it for me like that. I just find her as a regular schmegular writer, author, whatever. I don't have any strong feelings towards her books in general. I think they're pretty good, but they're not like, oh, Emily's my favorite author, blah, 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 all that stuff. I don't, I'm very indifferent towards Emily. I feel like because a lot of people don't necessarily like this book, I might end up really liking it. And the reason I say that is because I actually really liked People We Meet on Vacation and a lot of people don't like it. <laughs> so I feel like when it comes to Emily Henry books, I think the ones that people don't like as much are the ones I like if that makes sense. Because I think a lot of people like Book Lovers. I really liked Book Lovers. Book Lovers was the first Emily Henry book I read. So I really liked that one. I really liked people we meet on vacation. Beach Read, I liked, but I didn't really understand why people loved it as much as they did. And Happy Place, I didn't like really at all. So there's that. <laughs> Emily's just a hit or a miss for me. And that's just, that's just how it goes. And that's okay. That is fine. I'll start reading it because I have to give it back in like eight days because I'm starting this video very late. <laughs> but if you don't know the plot of this one, basically homegirl here has to move in with him because their significant others cheated with each other and are now getting together. So she has like no place to stay or whatever. So she's moving in with him. So the drama is dramaing, and so I feel I have really high hopes for this. I feel like I really will like it. So I don't know. We'll see, guys. I'm only like on chapter five. I've read probably forty pages in the span of three days, which is pretty slow for me. But I have to say, I honestly feel like I'm gonna really like this book. I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. I like Miles so far. I think that's his name. <laughs> I don't even know the characters' names yet. <laughs> I like just realized that the girl's name was Daphne. But anyways, um, <laughs> I like Miles, if that's his name. Honestly, by negative reviews, I mean I only saw like one. <laughs> and it wasn't really even negative. Um, it was Destiny Sidewell, or Seedwell, however you pronounce it, I'm not sure. She gave this book three stars, which isn't a bad review. But she is an Emily Henry lover she enjoys emily henry a lot so i was very surprised that she gave this one three stars and gave happy place five <laughs> i think happy place is probably my least favorite of emily henry's so far so just saying right now um <laughs> so i was pretty surprised by that and so i feel like that negative review from destiny was so heavy it was like a heavy hitter, you know? So then I just assumed that everyone in the world hated this book. 
<laughs> when that's not really true because the other book girlies like Haley Pham and Sarah, they both, I think, gave this book five stars. So there's there's a possibility I'll like this one. I, I feel like I'm going to end up liking this one the most out of her books so far until I reread them, at least, as you guys know. Beach Read is not my favorite. Yeah, I'm literally 11% in. So <laughs> I can't say too much, but so far, I do like it. Ghirardelli and 10 Star. Um. <laughs> Guys, it's Friday. And I'm chilling after work. Excuse I know I just stay not looking presentable. And I think I've said that in every clip at this point. But it's really alarming at this point <laughs> how I just never film while looking put together. You know, um, I obviously didn't go to work looking like this. But I woke up at like 5.30 in the morning when I didn't have to. Um, and just tossed and turned for a little bit until my alarm went off. So I'm a little sleepy. I'm a little sleepy. Funny story, I am at 30% in to the book now. I, as much as I've been wanting to read this book, I just haven't had the time, which is interesting and odd because that usually doesn't happen to me. <laughs> I, my life consists of work, food, read, sleep, repeat. And that's pretty much it. So the fact that I haven't had time to read is just weird, honestly, at this point. But I I haven't had enough time to read to the point where Libby is now like, hey, you have three days to finish this book. So now I'm like scrambling. But luckily it's Friday and I can just cocoon in bed. I can burrito it out in bed and just read this entire thing as fast as humanly possible. All the book girlies I watch that have read this book already, every single one of them, whether they loved the book or hated the book, every single one of them at some point mentions how they don't like Miles, which is the main guy. And then at some point, Emily makes you like him or whatever. But for, so I've been like wondering, ooh, what's so bad about him that everyone hates him, at least for a little bit. And I'm 30% in at this point, so I'm not like terribly too early into the book, but I just don't understand that because I have loved him since the beginning. So I'm kind of confused. <laughs> I'm kind of confused as to why everyone didn't like him, at least for a little bit, unless it's like gonna happen and I haven't gotten to that part. But it, from everyone's videos, it seemed like it was towards the beginning of the book that they didn't like him. And then towards the middle and the end, they really liked him. So I don't know if my standard for men is just low or what. But <laughs> I actually really like Miles. I like him a lot. Tr truly, the only thing I don't like is how he smokes a lot of weed. And that's just because I don't like the smell. I don't like the smell of weed. And I can't deal with it. So <laughs> I don't know if that's why everyone doesn't like him or what. But to me, he's great. He's very respectful. He's funny. He's go with the flow. He doesn't let his emotions control him. Like he's giving all the green flags to me. So I'm just very confused as to why people don't like him and I'm wondering if people don't like him because they're comparing him to the other book boyfriends of Emily Henry's because I know everyone's obsessed with Gus from Beach Read as you guys know I've mentioned already before I'm very indifferent with Emily Henry books so I don't have a vast overwhelming fe feeling towards any of the book boyfriends I like them but I don't really like I'm not like oh my god that's book husband right there like I don't care <laughs> I don't care that much, you know? So, yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the reason. Because they're comparing him to other people. Or what? Because right now, I'm just like, he's giving green flags to me. And maybe it's because there's like hints of fake dating. They haven't like fully gone into that trope yet. But it's leading towards that. 
a little bit. And you guys know, if you've been with me for even half a second, you know one of my absolute favorite tropes is fake dating. As overdone as it is, I don't care. I love it. I will eat it up every single time. I love a fake dating trope. And I don't know. I just really like it. I will say, I feel like from Emily Henry's books, usually, like, she's known as a more fiction with a subplot of romance type of writer i would say this one has is more tapping into the actual romance aspect a little bit it's more like a character development thing i guess because there's not really any any true plot i would say it's more the plot is the character development and so because of that it makes it feel like the main thing is the romance which is different from what emily henry usually does like with beach read there was a lot of it, um inferences on her family life and like what stuff happened with her dad and stuff I don't rem remember that much I don't know but I think that was my main critique that like I get that she's more on the fiction with a subplot of romance thing but I would have preferred more romance I think with book lovers there was a lot of emphasis on the sister dynamic that the main character and her sister had and the subplot was romance the subplot the romance was like the back burner of the story which a lot of people may enjoy I however I'm not a fiction girly like that you know I want the romance give me the romance and have the subplot be the the, the plot <laughs> I want the main plot I want the main focus to be the romance and then character development or whatever the heck it is can be the subplot okay that's what I want and so with this one I feel like the overarching plot is simply Daphne finding her own footing in a town that she didn't really choose to live in herself and doesn't know much about and also Daphne realizing that she does deserve love and is lovable and stuff like that so it is very character driven while there's a subplot of romance it feels like the romance is the biggest part of the plot despite the romance not being that heavy focused if that makes any sense like <laughs> I was just thinking of this while I was reading I feel like there aren't that many like oh my gosh I'm giggling and kicking my feet with quotes type of thing because Miles is very acts of service like which I enjoy a lot. I'm an access service girl. So if you're an access, access service girl as well, you'll probably really like Miles because I do as well. It's like the little things that are making me giggle and kick my feet with the romance, like him remembering um, what coffee shop she likes to go to, him realizing that she gets chai, not coffee, and remembering that, like him just remembering all these like subtle little things that she doesn't really have to ever remind him of. That really... That's my bread and butter right there, baby. But if you're looking for a lot of like romantic quotes, like I think Beach Read may have had, um, you're not really going to find that. Like if you're more uh, words of affirmation girl, then I could see why you may not necessarily care for this book as much. Depending on how Emily Henry goes with these last hundred pages this could be a five star read like I really am enjoying this I am currently terrified because there's still 80 pages left I'm only 80% in and they're already together and happy so now I'm terrified Emily Emily listen <laughs> Emily, <laughs> you're making me turn around on you, okay? Don't fuck it up in 80 pages. Please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> I am happy to report that Emily Henry has just received her first five-star read from me! I honestly didn't think this day would ever come, okay? <laughs> I never thought this day would come. I would, I never would have guessed I would give Emily Henry's book, any book, a five-star 
from her. I've never given her a five star for any of them. I think the closest was maybe a 4.5. But I was always missing something. There was always something I was missing with her books. This one, this one was just so good. Obviously, like I said, I need to do a reread on the other books to truly understand my feelings on like if Miles is my favorite. Currently he is, I have to say, which is probably an unpopular opinion because I know everyone loves Gus the most. But I thoroughly enjoyed Funny Story. I loved it. I think it was great pacing. Considering I basically read the entire book this weekend, I feel like it was never rushed and never slow. So that was good to me. Obviously, I would have loved like an epilogue of like a 10 years later, but I don't think that's really Emily's style. I don't think she's ever done that. The second to last chapter was so... That's where all the quotes were, okay? I'll tell you that right now. I can't wait to buy the paperback version next year <laughs> just so I can reread it and annotate. Ugh. Because Miles is the perfect little access service boy. And I can see why people wouldn't necessarily like this one compared to her other stuff. It's kind of different. It's the romance is a bigger focus, but it's like character development mixed in with romance. I feel like I can just relate to both Miles and Daphne in this book. Like, especially Miles, he just has so much like self-doubt within himself and he feels like he needs to like earn people's love and like be perfect and I can relate to that. I, I understood him and I related to him and so it made me like him a lot. But yeah, I I really liked this book, okay? <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot. And now I actually do want to reread the other Emily Henry stuff I have because I have book lovers. I have people we meet on vacation and I have beach read so comment down below which one I should reread next to give Emily another chance because maybe maybe this is the time maybe this is when I'm be gonna become an Emily Henry girly maybe I'm about to f get it you know I feel like Emily Henry is like the Taylor Swift of books <laughs> and it's like you either get it or you don't type of vibe and for a long time, I didn't get it. Same thing with Taylor. And then one day, I got it. And now, I be listening to Taylor all the time. You know? And so maybe, maybe Emily, maybe this is the, the moment. Maybe this is when I get it. Maybe I'm finally getting it. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyways, five stars. Funny story. I really enjoyed. I loved it. And I guess what? I predicted I would like it because of the plot. And I was right. I was right. I loved it. I loved it a lot. I loved Miles. And I loved Daphne. And I just loved everything. I loved everything about it. I have no critiques for this one. And I usually have a critique. But I don't. I genuinely just really liked it. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> so, okay. It's now like 11.30. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> Hi, guys. It has been a full week since I read Funny Story. And I haven't even, I haven't even took Just for the Summer out of my little pouch this whole week. I think, <laughs> I think May, I truly feel like I started the month off with reading Into the Dark, right? The last in the Magnolia Parks universe. And I absolutely despised that book so much. The vlog hopefully is out by now i've also been slacking in editing i apologize but that's just life okay <laughs> that's just life when you do this as like a side gig as a little hobby thing and you have an actual eight to five you know but <laughs> i hated that book so much and i feel like because of that book i just don't want to read like ever <laughs> i don't want to read ever again <laughs> Because I absolutely hated that book. That book and Funny Story are all that I've read this month in May. And it is currently May 27th. It is literally May 27th. You see that? 
I've been consistently reading like six books a month and now I'm about to ruin that streak. And I think it's all Into the Dark's fault. But also, I think I just really, even though I bought this in paperback, I have just been in the mood to like read on Kindle. Like anytime I want to read is when I'm laying in bed. And the best way to read when laying in bed is with your little Kindle. I crocheted this, by the way. That's why it's kind of jacked up. But... <laughs> I just want to read on my Kindle, but I have no books on my Kindle currently that I want to read other than just for the summer. <laughs> so it's like, do I buy the Kindle version of just for the summer also so I can finally start reading it? Or do I just wait until Libby actually gives it to me? Because I've also had that on hold for a little bit. And I just don't know what to do, okay? I thought I was going to knock this book out for Memorial Day weekend because guess what today is more memorial day <laughs> this is the first time i'm looking at this book okay because i just ended up spending my entire weekend just doing my hair don't want to hold it i don't want to hold it but i got it on paperback because i knew abby jimenez was gonna make me want to annotate it like i know that and steph bohr just posted a tiktok and a youtube short about how this book is for the access service girlies guess what i am an access service girly okay and she read a quote i i liked real quick and swiped away um because i want to be surprised when i get to the quote everything within me wants to read this book except for the part that means i have to physically hold it because <laughs> i don't want to i don't but i know once i start once i start i'm gonna be eating it up okay starting a new book is the hardest part for me I feel like I'm always wearing this panda shirt when I'm vlogging and that's because I just really like the shirt you know I just showered this I hadn't been wearing literally this whole week where I haven't vlogged I wasn't wearing the shirt <laughs> and now I'm wearing the shirt and now it's time to vlog it's like it's like this shirt makes me vlog or something <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just realized that this whole week where I haven't picked up the camera, I was not wearing this shirt. And the second, I literally just showered and put this shirt on. And now I'm vlogging. <laughs> this is the vlogging shirt. And pandas are my favorite. So I'll see y'all when I need to say something. Other than I really want a Dr. Pepper. Hi everyone so it's been about two days I think since the last clip I filmed and I finally picked up the book and I'm actually 25% in it looks like I am almost on page 100 and I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess something <clears throat> I read all 100 pages at work <laughs> it was a very slow day today okay and a little bit yesterday but yeah I read like 30 pages at work yesterday and then the other 70 today <laughs> so yeah I that's why you haven't seen really any reactions from me but I have to say Abby has gotten me into it after page one bestie okay I love how the love interests have like were introduced to each other pretty much by like page two or three. <laughs> I loved that. I liked how they made a connection, how they first met. I thought it was really unique and fun and cool and stuff. And right now I love whatever his name is, Justin. <laughs> I love Justin. I really was going to say Evan. What is that about? That's not even close. But I love Justin already so far. And I love Emma. Emma's such a sweetie. And she's so gracious and I just love her so much. And Justin's so funny. I love, I just love everything so far. And yeah. I already feel like this is probably going to be a five star, which I'm not surprised by because it's Abby Jimenez and I love Abby Jimenez. Um, pretty much the only complaint I have right now is I feel like in the beginning, some of the dialogue kind of felt like, oh, you're trying so hard to be hip <laughs> right now and all this stuff, you know, like it kind of felt like that a little bit. 
but I still like it. I still like it a lot. I like the dynamic. I there's I have nothing to say other than this is great so far. And I'm going to do my best to try and read like another 100 pages before I go to bed so I can be 50% in and then hopefully tomorrow I can maybe read the rest. I probably won't, but I want to because tomorrow is the 31st. So I want to finish this book before the new month starts. You know, my little OCD self is really kicking in right now. And also on the first, I will be on a plane and I'm not trying to bring this book. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I am trying to be a Kindle girly when I'm traveling, okay? I don't want to bring anything. So we'll see if we can do it. I don't have high hopes. I'm very busy tomorrow, so <laughs> we'll see. I wanted to show y'all there's like cute little pictures in the book too. Like look at that. I think it adds so much character and just funness to the book. And I just, I really like it. I really enjoy it. I really like getting an actual visual representation of what she's talking about. Because you can describe all you want, but my brain's not going to figure out what the heck you're trying to tell me. You know, like this was very helpful. <laughs> this little picture right here. I was like, oh, okay. That's what it looks like. Good to know. But, yeah, I really enjoy that. I also didn't realize that this was a part of the part of your world universe. And so when Benny made an appearance, I was like, wait, that Benny? From yours truly? Is that one? Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's fun. I love that. I have managed to get to 150 nine pages so hopefully we can read another 40 before bed and get to the 200 mark but we'll see i just made a tea a little peppermint tea because the breakouts are breaking out right now and i just can't deal with it i realize i probably haven't really explained i haven't done my job and like explain what this was about or anything and that's because i like going in blind pretty much all i knew going into it was that they're having a dating arrangement just for the summer because they have conflicting things that are causing them to just date in the summer and that's all i needed to know and that's all i'm gonna tell you because i feel like so far only knowing that has made this so fun i enjoy it a lot I've loved everything. I've loved everything about it. I love Emma. She's so gracious and understanding. And Justin, he's so relatable and just funny and adorable and down bad already. And I just love it so much. I love it so much. Guys, I think I'm successfully actually going to finish this book before the first. And I think it's all because I doubted that I would. You know, when I'm confident that I will, I never do. <laughs> and then when I'm unconfident, guess what? We do. Because I got to page 200 last night like I wanted to. And then tell me how on a Friday my job was so slow that I damn near finished the book. <laughs> this is how much I have left. I have like 15 pages left and I probably could have finished it at work. But I was like, you know what? Let me chill out and let me actually read this when I get home, the rest of it with you guys. But since I've read like a good 190 pages <laughs> at work somehow, I took notes so you guys can know my thoughts while I was having them. So let's, let's debrief, okay? So first and foremost, Maddie, Better have her own book. She could be nicer with her delivery of the truth that she gives to Emma since she knows it's a touchy subject. But sometimes you just need that tough love, you know? So I understand, especially because I definitely see myself a lot more in Maddie than Emma. I'm a lot more like, fuck you. Especially if you're hurting a person I care about while Emma's a lot more gracious and understanding and stuff. I relate to Maddie a lot, but... <laughs> We probably won't get a Maddie book just because of some stuff I'll say in a little bit. But, oh my gosh. But yeah, so that's what I first thought of. 
And then Justin is for the acts of service girlies because tell me why he brings her lunch for whenever she takes a break because she's a nurse so he doesn't nobody knows when she actually takes her lunch break <laughs> she just takes it when she can and so he decides to just drop off the food since he can't like actually go get lunch with her tell me why this man also brought lunch for maddie and remembered that maddie's a vegetarian and so got her lunch specifically for her being vegetarian this man <laughs> oh my god justin he's everything to me after 31 o m f g so let me turn to that page so i can figure out what the heck even happened <laughs> this <laughs> this i was like doing everything i possibly could to not be squealing and kicking my feet at work all I'll show you, because if you've read it, you know what the heck this means. If you haven't, it's not really much of a spoiler. But this is all I'm going to show you for context. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Justin is that man, okay? What else did I say? He's sleeping on a bench. He slept on a bench for this woman. Justin is everything to me, okay? <laughs> and then I said chapter 40, Amber, when I catch you. Because chapter 40... Oh my, oh my God. First of all, tell me why. A little bit before chapter 40 is when I realized that Neil in this book is the same Neil from part of your world. I am so slow, God damn it. Because, <laughs> tell me, <laughs> because not only was I reading the name Neil multiple times, I was reading the name Benny a couple times and it wasn't until they mentioned the like, transplant thing that I was like wait is that Benny wait a minute and then at some point they even mentioned Brianna and like how she's uh how she's in the medical field and stuff and all this all these things and it still didn't click for me until they mentioned Brianna and Jacob together and that's when I was like oh, yours truly oh my god is them tell me how once they mentioned Daniel Grant, I said, wait a goddamn second. Don't tell me this is the same Daniel Grant that I know of from part of your world. Because I was literally like, wait, is that his name? I'm pretty sure his name was Daniel. I just can't remember if his last name was Grant or not. It's him. <laughs> it's him. And I was shocked. I was so shocked. And honestly, before before realizing that Neil and like Brianna and Jacob and Daniel were kind of making like little appearances in this book, I was kind of like, so is this one a part of the part of your world universe literally just because Justin is friends with Benny and that's it? Like I was kind of confused about that. But <laughs> this book was so this book is doing so well with like the full circle-ness of like this this kind of feels like it's like the last book of the part of your world series I don't know for certain or not but the way it's written it's so like satisfying and full circle and I just love it so much but oh my god the things we learn in chapter 40 are horrendous okay i actually was ready to beat people up i was actually doing my best to make sure i didn't cry while i was at work because that would have been embarrassing and yeah daniel's the only one that i recognized from just his name without needing any context so there's that and that's another reason why it's like i kind of like that i went into this blind because i didn't even know that it was a part of that universe until i logged it into my goodreads and it showed that and i was like oh okay interesting i guess <laughs> but yeah chapter 40 was actually crazy actually insane and it makes me want to read it makes me want to reread part of your world because i listened to that on audiobook because everyone suggested to do that because it's a lot better reading experience which i probably agree with i don't know i haven't read the physical to compare it to <laughs> but i really did enjoy it i gave it five stars it was the first abby jimenez book i read to make me start this little rabbit hole <laughs> so i really did enjoy it i read that one in december 
And then I read yours truly in like, I don't know, February. So the fact that I remember Daniel fresh off the bat, but not, <laughs> but not when they mentioned Benny or Brianna is kind of ridiculous. I only recognized it when it was Jacob. Sorry, Brianna. Um, love you though. And then the last note I have is chapter 43. Maddie is the greatest friend. And it's because of a sandwich. <laughs> But actually, this book has the best love interest, the best male love interest, and the best friend ever. Because Justin and Maddie are truly, like, some of the greatest characters I've ever read about. They are so kind and understanding. And even though Maddie is, like, known for being scary or whatever, she loves Emma down. She is such a good best friend that it was like bringing me to tears how good of a friend she was <laughs> because how did she, she brought her a sa sandwich. I know that sounds stupid, but in context, if you read the book, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And she just, she brought her a sandwich during that t a time when she knew she would need that damn sandwich, and, you know? And it's just like, and that's why I'm an acts of service girly, you know? It's the little things. It's not about like waiting on someone hand and foot. It's about Justin remembering that Maddie is a vegetarian and going out of his way to give her lunch too and not just the girl he's interested in. It's the things like that, you know? It doesn't have to be the floaty scene, you know? It's just, all the things in between that you know it's just listening and remembering things and it's just ugh, acts of service for life okay that's all i have to say me having 15 pages left <laughs> i think i could make a really good assessment at this point but i was expecting there to be a third act breakup or a third act third act conflict with literally 30 pages left of the book because that's just something Abby really loves to do for some goddamn reason and third act breakups are not my favorite but I get that you need to like shake up the plot a little bit I just wish that she would like I don't know do it like when there's a hundred to like 75 pages left or something because 30 pages left are you serious right now but and that's always been my critique with all of the books I've read by her because at this point I've read every single book this woman has written okay I would read her grocery list at this point <laughs> but with that has always been my number one complaint with her books even though even though I still eat it up you know that's still been something that I don't really enjoy that much this one however has to be my favorite because I feel like the way she executed this one made the most sense to where I didn't even care that there's like 30 pages left and this is happening because it was a lot more it just felt more real and realistic and just I had a better understanding of like oh yeah this is necessary type of thing instead of with the other ones it just felt more like a um, we need to add some type of conflict, so add that into there real quick. It felt like that with a lot of the other books. This one, I genuinely understand where the characters are coming from with what they decided to do, you know? And so I think... I'm gonna give this a five stars. I already know it. I don't think anything could happen in these last 15 pages unless like somebody, unless she does like a death trope. <laughs> There's really nothing to make me not give this five stars at this point, so... I'm going to read the last 15 pages and give you my final review. Yes, I'm on the floor. And I also took off my turtleneck because I was literally dying. But I finished the book. And like I said, five stars! Five stars. Also, another reason this universe is so full circle is the fact that Doug finally got a girl. And I'm so happy for him. If you know, you know. That's why I think this will be the last book is solely because of that, to be honest. So Maddie is probably not going to get her own book. And the way they wrote Maddie's story, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. We got some crumbs of what the tea is with her. And I just loved that. I loved 
this is my favorite Abby Jimenez book. This is my favorite. My absolute favorite. I adore this book. I love Justin. I love, I loved everything. <laughs> I loved absolutely everything. No notes. No notes. I love this book, guys. I loved it. This one, if I had to pick which one from this video is my favorite, it's definitely going to be Abby Jimenez's book. Because I loved Funny Story too, but this is where it's at, okay? This is the one for me. But we somehow have a video where both books I read, I gave five stars. So that's different. That's new. That's exciting. Love that for me. Also, look at these tabs. Do you see that? Look at how much I tapped. Especially the pink one. The pink one is for like cute, sweet, kind stuff. I just tabbed so much. I love this book. I'm so glad I got the physical copy because I knew I wanted to annotate it. Sometimes I'm right about things like that. I get the vibe and I just had it right this time. But anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go pack and shower and all that stuff and get ready for my flight in the morning. So I'm going to end the video here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Meet me on the street line. Tell me what it feels like